we have an opportunity for me to go to Cocktail de Mor, and I haven't been here in years. I think the last Cocktail de Mor I went to might have been a couple of cocktails before the last one at the original Grease Mueller. The, yeah, that might have been one of the last ones I went to. So the original Grease Mueller, which is definitely one of my favorite clubs ever in terms of a space, in terms of a hang, in terms of a chill, especially for someone like myself who normally goes to you know Berlin on my own. I normally go on these kind of solo weekend techno adventures and whatnot where I kind of just book a random weekend just to kind of head out and go on a bit of a techno trip and see whoever's playing out there. Now I'm kind of planning stuff out because, you know, I don't want to waste my time or I don't want to go there, you know, when there might be a good event happening here in London. But before I'll just pick any random date and just go and then see what happens because usually as long as you go to like a cool enough or good enough club, you can definitely trust the selections and the DJ bookings to be good on any given weekend. Or even if it's not someone that you know, it's definitely something that you kind of be a big fan of. And I remember... um going there a lot and of course Chris Mueller was definitely one of the places that I visited and kind of been blown away by in terms of just a club it's just a really nice space um it was probably the best place to sorry probably the best space to roll on especially outside on the swings I remember one time years ago sitting outside on a couch and just holding this lady's hand as we were kind of rolling nothing happened nothing crazy just holding hands just kind of talking crazy for hours and hours and hours and hours until we basically left until right at the end no and the thing i love about i think when i go there a lot, there's never an exchanging of numbers there's never usually instagram stops it's just stuff that exists in the moment which is why usually when i go there i rarely if ever post pictures and stuff i just kind of want to you know immerse myself in the environment and i remember being a greaseman and thinking wow man this is definitely one of those things because taking a picture of grace Miller when you're in the swings or you're in the little climbing frame thing it doesn't necessarily resonate when you see it the next day back because it's pretty ratty looking it looks a little bit you know diy-ish it probably is it's like it's been stuck together with duct tape and whatnot but when you're there it seems so fun you're exploring all these different avenues you're jumping up these monkey bars you're pretending to do pull-ups you're hiding in little spots and stuff you're sitting here you're sitting there you're chilling with this person you're chilling with that person it's such a cool little hang that it never really gets reflected well in the flipping pictures but anyway that aside Cocteau de Mor definitely one of the most favorite nights I've been to and funnily enough I kind of discovered Cocteau de Mor based on a review written by um, Daniel Wang for Electronic Beats back in the day when Electronic Beats was actually sick now it's not so much now it's kind of fallen by the wayside but Electronic Beats used to have these really cool articles they'd write um, about the Berlin scene and whatnot and about other people associated with the electronic music scene in general focusing on artists and interviews and whatnot and loads of really cool op-eds and Daniel Wang put together a real good kind of ode and love letter to flipping um, Cocteau de Moore that I absolutely fell in love with and I think one of the bits that kind of resonates that I kind of read that to you towards the end kind of gives you a really good description idea of what the kind of place is like it's got some cool pictures the people that attended it but essentially if you scroll down here towards the end it will say here da, da, da. yeah um yes that's it i love the way the music flows at cocktail without too much drama and personal statement leaving so much oral space up for the bodies of the dancer to do what they will that sounds like alistair mccrawley pagan rituals worshiping the beast all of that no gospel choirs no gimmicky digital noises but rather a continuous stream of rhythm and bass and this is no accident because disco drama duo plays so much from physical instinct that their fingers always are under pitch control never too fast or too slow thus the clock stands still and thus the day remains tonight and no one ever notices too much expression can end up turning into a chaotic soup simplicity and oral and visual stimuli are an underrated virtue one which is always respected here I stay on the dance floor for cocktail, simply floating on these rhythms and this soft emotion and stop wondering or worrying when it's ever supposed to end. It doesn't end. So here is a love letter to my favorite cocktail. Grazie, regassi, Sinchi, prost, campai. Let's dance and enjoy the music. E tutto, e tutta quella genti fiori de testa. Daniel Wang, May 2014. And that for me was all I needed to hear. Don't get me wrong, the party obviously isn't for me. It's primarily a party centered around um, gay culture and LGBTQ and queer people and whatnot. And it's definitely something that I would describe as more so of a safe space for them as opposed to me being a hetero cisgendered male. But still, I feel like going to cocktail was such a eye-opener, was so refreshing because I was so used to 
the kind of you know the oot oot dark side of techno everyone wearing black and bondage everywhere which is obviously fun to see and hang out with but i'm from london and i'm from the place of the multi-genre dj which is a really lame and horrible term but essentially djs that don't have one genre they stick to they play everything based on you know what time of night or what the vibe is like so to go to somewhere like a berlin and just be hearing techno from you know morning till night was a little bit tiring so after a while to kind of freshen things up again i you know randomly went to flipping grease miller again i didn't know nothing about cocktail i kind of read that one article and then randomly i kind of popped into grease miller and cocktails on that night and it was an absolute joy to hear cheesy pop music to hear really good disco really good synth pop really good you know ebm um, really good punk music that really strange and eclectic and varied kind of soundscape that if anything was more representative of what Berghain is and what it used to be then maybe the straight up you know knacked corny nonsense big platform boots and bondage shit going on at the moment that's a little bit formulaic and a little bit boring i like the kind of mix up a bit a little bit of fresh don't get me wrong no one's going to flip in berlin to go to the best ama piano night there probably is some there you know you go to places based on their kind of strong suit but for the most part i do think it's a quite a nice balance to have these two things going on the same place a place where there's kind of crazy black techno industrial dark sounds and then you've also got this really nice light environment where everybody's kind of encouraged to get silly let their hair down not take so too seriously have a drink have a laugh and whatnot and i really like the vibe and if anything there's a really cool little article here from electronic beats actually that features some of the last pictures ever taken at grease miller before it closed because now i think grease miller if i'm not mistaken is now rso club if i'm not mistaken it's now rso so grease miller now is changed to rso it's a different venue different location um different build everything about it um but now they're doing the cocktails at this other place called club ost i haven't been to which again is another good thing because when i go it's gonna mean i'm gonna go on a little nighttime you know non-cruising kind of cruising jaunt and i'm gonna be able to kind of club hop and go to different spaces and check them out but i thought these pictures taken from electronic beats um featuring the last ever grease muller so the last ever cocktail the more grease muller were pretty cool and they give you a little bit of a kind of uh, an idea on the vibe this was on the right here is a picture showing the main sort of dance floor that i remember if i remember correctly there was a the, on this wall here towards the right there's these really nice big open windows that are all different sizes and kind of a little bit habit you know happily put together and they're kind of covered in nice little clear sheets of different color so when the light is kind of seeping through it kind of shines different lights through it's really cool really nice i think that may be where fold might have got the idea for their club shutter windows things maybe the guys are into fold saw grease miller because i remember when i saw group fold for the first time and decided having those little show those shutters it kind of reminded me a little bit of panorama bar in the morning when they kind of raise the blinds up and also kind of reminded me a little bit of um of Grace Smuller and that little thing they got there on the side and obviously Cocktail I think Club Division they also have the same sort of thing but I remember that being one of the best things about it and the DJ booth is really up close it's on the same level as the dance floor it's right in front of you no one really pay attention to it too much because there's so much going on in the main room over together but I loved it and I think towards the side of here where there's the windows anyway where I'm looking at there's also a be a row of chairs if I'm not mistaken I think it was chairs or tables or something along those kind of lines so that was always pretty cool to check out um, and again all these little fun things outside which are really cool um you got these really i don't know if they're water tanks or something or oil drums or something these really tall cylinder little things that you can kind of sit in on that are really cool especially if it wasn't cold or wet you had a really big swing you had a yeah loads of pallets and stuff that you could sit on there was a darkish type of room that you could sit in as well and chill um great sound system again cool outside to hang out even during the summer lighting bar the toilets i remember greatly oh this was the best bit in the year next to the river was you come out next as you come out of the club and you pass where all the kind of you know the adult adventure park is the basically um grease meal is on the is on basically a river kind of similar to what you see to in hackney wick and whatnot and there's this really nice decking that you can sit down on and if anything if i'm not mistaken there's decking all over the place so it's little deckings bits like inside a little forest so you can find little nooks and crannies and chill sometimes you're walking there you might pop by and see somebody people doing some you know some funky stuff and whatnot but it's just a cool place to hang out on and kind of watch the sunrise as you're rolling um and again more cool pictures of the inside with bottles and beers all over the place and yeah this brings back some money memories man and i remember this place so this is the entrance as you come in 
I remember one time specifically going there. Um, I don't think it was a cup. It wasn't a cocktail de more. It was something else. And I do remember a, one of our group of people just not e- accurately put in. Because I guess Berlin's weird. Because I guess you, you're you're encouraged to take drugs inside the bathrooms. You're obviously not meant to do them on the dance floor and kind of disrespect the space. And obviously risk, you know, the space getting shut down because you're not obeying the rules and whatnot, being too flagrant what you're doing. And I think maybe that also extends to the security and the searches outside. I think they they don't expect you to flipping, you know, stuff stuff up your flipping rectum. But I think they do kind of hope that you put some effort to conceal what you're doing. And I guess the guy that was with, he just had it in his pocket, like just had it in his like pocket, like he had coins in there and maybe forgot. And I remember it being so funny because we all got in and he was the last one in. And I think he, as you were waiting for him to get in, they found the thing. Uh, I think he had some coke in a little baggie. And the guy basically just literally looked at it, opened it really slowly, and simply poured the whole context out in the bin. And he said to him, what do you want to do? Do you want to go in or do you want to leave? He said, yeah, I'll go in. So yeah, cool. And he paid and he went in. Like he poured the entire bag in. I think it might have been whether he picked up a gram, two grams, three and a half, who knows. He poured the entire baggie. Like he just looked at him, opened up. He just, yeah, he sort of patted him down, saw the baggie pulled it open slowly and just slowly poured it into the bin next to him because i think there was a bin next to the bouncers when they're searching and stuff so they can get rid of any bottles or whatnot stuff you have um but i remember that being a <laughs> being a really funny part of my uh gruesome story and also the walk down so this is the there's like a picture here that shows an alleyway on the side of a big warehouse where basically i guess gruesome was on the corner and you basically walk down here to go on a way to go there which kind of reminds me a little bit of like um color factory color factory has a little section at the back where you kind of can sit down and see the trees a little bit it kind of reminds me a little bit of that but i do remember this be this is usually the location where i'd be stuffing my stuff in my socks or whatever or boarding whatever gear i had on me when you take this long walk down that's usually the location that you do all your stuff in so seeing the pictures brings back a lot of good memories and it's unfortunate it had to close i think they had to do it's probably redevelopment you know another part of gentrification i'm sure they're going to turn that whole place into some big shiny you know buildings and whatnot um everyone that's going to live there now going forward will have no recollection or no memory no memory of greece miller probably won't care about the space at all and it'll be kind of lost in the annals of time but it was an amazing space really really was an amazing space one of the most fun clubs i've been to 100 percent, and i honestly um can't wait to i guess i can't wait to go at spirit home because it's not the same place but you know i wish it was still around and stuff but it's good that there is some picture or evidence of it still existing out there that we can kind of get a look at because obviously most of these places it's no pictures no videos and whatnot so if you do get some idea on the pictures and stuff we can look back on it is quite a nice thing to go back and look at but still as i mentioned before club ost um costa del mar 25th of february um obviously as you can see there for some reason cocktail del mar still do things um really low-key there's no r there's no resident advisor to the event there's no sorry there's no ra tickets there's no dice tickets it's all on their own platform they're doing it they've got the event list up on facebook they've got some tickets on some other ticketing website that i'm not really too familiar with i love that ab- ability about it i think they've got a telegram group that you can join and some other bits and bobs if you want to get involved but for the most part it's kind of like if you know you know but i definitely would say it's one of my favorite parties to go to and i went there a very long time ago it's not even made for me it's made i mean it's not even made with me in mind at all but i still had an absolute blast and i enjoyed it and if anything it kind of added to the overall love affair that i've had with that fucking city forever 